65? 65 fish? Yeah. I didn't become wavy gravy till 69 after right. after the, the you know what uh, was over. And we went to Texas for the Texas Pop Festival and we had a, a free stage. And uh, I was laying down on the free stage. It was before my second spinal fusion. And uh, uh, they, were, they had about 1,100 kunga drummers on the stage. And uh, uh, I looked down. First, I saw this great clown from the Cowboy Rodeo being sold a joint by a long hair for $6. So I asked for all the marijuana on the stage. Uh -huh. And I looked around, and the kunga drummers started to pick it up. And we got this. Uh, a chant going, all the dope on the stage, all the dope. And I looked down, there's this monstrous pile of drinkers. <laughs> good I idea. Said, okay, yeah. if people say you roll good, come on up. These guys are stripped to the waist, rolling joints one-handed, and tossing them out the audience. This big cloud of smoke comes up over Texas, and this disembodied voice comes and says, B.B. King is here with his boss. Oh, so he's going to play for free, clear the stage. <laughs> and I looked around, there's nobody there but me. Uh -huh. And I was getting up slow, and I felt this arm on my shoulder. I looked up, there was B.B. King. He looked up. You wavy gravy? Yes, sir. <laughs> he says, well, wavy gravy, we can work around you. I don't know why he called me that. He leaned me up he against his that? amplifier. Maybe he came and Johnny Winter came out of the wings and they played till dawn. Yeah. Maybe he meant something else. But wavy gravy. Wavy gravy. Yeah, I met him when they put him in the Wall of Fame in L.A. And he says, I sort of remember. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> uh, uh, I first saw Wavy when he was a young Los Angeles comedian in 1963. I saw him playing the Astro, and he had, a, he had a, like a, a great physique and a blow-dried haircut. Is that right? He was like an L.A. comedian kind of guy. Yeah, Lenny Bruce was my manager in those days. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Under the name Hugh Romney. Yeah. Was yeah. there any albums? Or any... Third Stream Humor on World Pacific. Is that right? A yeah. rare disc. Uh, what about were you interacting with? Something about Lord Buckley? Well, Jim Dixon it was the guy who, who did the album for World Pacific, and he did the birds and, uh, you know, all that stuff. Uh -huh. uh, he also recorded all of Lord Buckley. Well, uh, where are you from, originally? Uh, originally, I was uh, born in uh, East Greenbush, New York. Uh -huh. So when did... When did <laughs> He talks about You're lying! <laughs> you were born in Greenbush? What? You too? <laughs> no. I was just thinking how apropos. <laughs> uh, did, but as, a, as a young comedian, did you, were you, did you go right to L.A. when he saw you at the Astro? Were you operating out of L.A. then? Well, it was it was very surreal. I was I, I, I was a, a teenage beatnik, you know. I used to read my poems in the coffee houses and stuff, and uh -huh. uh, and uh, uh, people would line up four deep around the block to look at. It was kind of a geek show kind of a situation. <laughs> well, then you it know was that. Uh, but as as my poems became uh, 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 more intense, I, they became shorter and shorter, and I would improvise between poems as long as I possibly could before I had to read another poem. So this guy saw me do this and skip the poems talk about the weird stuff and he started mailing me around the country and next thing you know I was opening for uh, <coughs> him and John Coltrane and Thelonious Monk and all them guys. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. And that's, this is like the late 50s or the early 60s? Late 50s, early 60s, both. So you were on that boho uh, beatnik Both. Well, I was on the cusp between uh, hippie and beatnik. I remember when Bobby Dylan first came into the uh, the Gaslight. He asked me if he could go on and perform. The Gaslight, where is it? On MacDougall Street in uh -huh. New York. That's where I used to do it at. And uh, I asked him, I said, what's your name, Kitty? He told me. I grabbed the mic. I said, he was wearing uh, a sign on his guitar that said, this machine kills fascists. Mm -hmm. And I later discovered he was also wearing Woody Guthrie's underwear at yeah. that time. He said, wow. That's Woody Guthrie uh, uh, sign. I just grabbed the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just grabbed the mic. I said, here he is, a legend in his lifetime. What did you say your name was again? <laughs> Cool. Well, actually, speaking of like uh, hitchhiking cross country and, and being an itinerant folk singer, were you doing that? You told me you mentioned coming into Chicago and playing a play. Oh yeah, that no, post, I, did, I did that. Actually, country Joe or speaking of Woody Guthrie, uh, um, I grew up uh, next door neighbors with uh, Woody Guthrie's family. Was that right? Uh, in New York, New York until City. the age of eight, and so I went to school with, um, with. I went to kindergarten in first grade with Arlo. Was that wow. right? Wow. Uh, and. Uh, and Jody, who I still see now, Jody lives in Berkeley, you know. <laughs> but, but I mean, old friends of the family. And I went to Marge Guthrie's uh, dance school with Woody's wife. She had a, a, a tap dance academy in, in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. And I first learned tap dancing in uh, Marge Guthrie's uh, tap dancing school. Wow. Uh, so. So you were hoofing uh, fish, hoofing yeah. fish. Then I then I went to LA as a young man, but uh, I mean you but, moved there on your own or your family moved there. My family, 
uh, moved there, and I, uh, I, I guess I began sort of uh, going around the country uh, in 1963. And, uh, With a guitar, I guess. Music. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very definitely. You know, played all the bag houses in New York. Well, basket houses. Uh -huh. Basket oh. houses in New York in Greenwich Village. Uh huh. Yeah. And, uh, well, we know we all know about the country Joe and the fish stuff. Here's a couple of very melted indie. Independent records from. Oh, that's my British rock star. Right? Wait, 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 you were a British rock star? Oh, yeah, I was a British rock star for when about is, a year. When is that? Oh, I'll flip by these, the 1970 list. something or other. And there's another one? Yeah, that's taken right here on 6th Street in San Francisco in front of the Liberal Gun, Liberal Loan. What, you, what year was this? Uh, 1980 or so. Oh, 80, that recently? Yeah. And then this one? Uh, that's uh, mid 70s somewhere. Yeah. Who did that? That's a pretty cover. So you had all kinds of independent records out there, you know, major label records out after the Fish experience. And I also know you worked producing or from something with uh, Robert Hunter and. Uh, 